Hey YouTubers, how's it going? So this is uh, chapter 5 or 6 or something like that of the shed build and uh, there's a few bits to show. Uh, I think I'm gonna talk you through how I made this door. It's um, because if you're building a small shed chances are you want a smaller than normal door because um, well a normal door is going to look a bit uh, disproportionate. So here we go, let's go and have a look. So this is made out of um, lengths of 4x2 carcassing. So you've got uh, two on the sides and then some cross members here and there screwed together. Now the problem when you're making anything like this is is to try and keep it square because um, you know when you hang a, a square on one side the other side is likely to drop down because of the weight even if it doesn't do it initially it might do it over time so you need something to kind of brace it you could either use diagonals or in this case I've infilled this bottom area here with a sheet of plywood plywood because that's quite that will keep the door square over time because it's um, I, I don't know what the engineering principle behind that is but uh, Go figure, as they say. So this is done rough and ready. Normally with hinges you would you countersink them in here to do a proper job. Um, all I've done is uh, just slap them across the back flat here. It's a lot quicker and um, does the same job pretty much. Um, you know most carpenters would do a proper job like I say can sinking it so you could only see this this bit poking out I mean I guess that looks a bit nicer but uh, you know I'm not building a spaceship here and um, this is my crude arrangement for some ventilation I'm probably going to put a window in here at some point uh, but basically you open that up and then uh, you put the bolt back up here and then that will open up and give you a bit of uh, air coming in if you want it. Like I said, I wouldn't expect people to copy that because it's pretty pretty scruffy really. Um, I've got a spring latch here. That's uh, an easy thing to use because um, you don't have to do the drill through here for the door handle and whatnot. I mean, I don't suppose it's really that much extra work actually. But like I said, I've done this a few times before and what for whatever reason, I play, the thing I use is a spring latch. You can see that's sticking a bit when I, when I open it. Where's that, where's that catching? Ah, yeah. So this is um, a, uh, oh, hang on, let me show you the bottom of the door. So when you cut the bottom of the door, uh, you see you make a little notch in it like this, and that will fit over the, the weather strip here. So the um, that notch we just saw, We'll go over the top like that. So all the water coming down the outside, which would be the on, on the end of my finger now, is falls on the outside of the weather strip. If you don't have that little notch, either you have a big gap under the door um, because you've, you've done it so the door goes over the top or um, the door won't close because it's too low and bumps into this. So you need a little notch, just so it will um, overhang that weather strip. And to get a bit of extra overhang, I've made this up here. And this is the bit which is catching. It needs a bit cut off this end. Um, but that is just, I used the circular saw um, on an angle and just cut a triangular section off a piece of, uh, piece of wood, screwed that on. I need, it needs some sealant along the top here because at the moment the water just runs right down that gigantic gap which is there. So that's the door. Um, as you can see, I don't know, you can see some green staining here. Um, when I initially did the door, I painted it green. It looked dreadful. So I painted it over with gray while it was still damp and now the green paint has shown through. So hopefully next time I do that, um, it will be dry and it won't show through again. So this is the uh, ship lap I'm putting on the outside and um, it's got a nice satisfying job to do putting the ship lap on because it goes on quickly 
and um, it's uh, a uh, quite a pleasing job because of that. So what happens at the corners? So I suppose if you were really skilled you could maybe bevel these and have a 45 degree angle and have them meeting up like that um, if you wanted to. I should imagine that would be pretty difficult to do neatly. So I've always just done a butt joint and what I've done, I got this piece of board here, I screwed that on this face here like that and uh, so when I'm working I just butt these ones up against that piece of board and that keeps that edge nice and straight. I've got to the top now so I've taken it off. Um, I've got a few cuts to do around the top of that window that needs to be cut around the top so I'll leave that fiddly stuff to later on um, and now I'm going to do this front face and perhaps after I've done that I'll do another quick video and if my editing skills are up to it I might stick it on the other end of this one because um, it's uh, probably not worth a own video in its own right um, so I'll just show you this last this corner down here Bit muddy today. Uh, now I've left what I do, I just cut these and I'll just leave them hanging over however they end up, you know. Because again, here I'm just going to put the next piece. Oh, hang on, there's an off cut here, I'll show you. So pretend this was um, long enough to go all the way along the whole side, okay? You just put that like that, okay, and you would. Um, just screw that in position and away you go and that way when you cut that off with a jigsaw or a circular saw uh, later on then you have a nice neat corner or well in my book you'll have a neat corner but uh, there you go so with um when you're putting the ship lap on i started at the bottom of the window here and then i worked down and then i um worked up from from that end there all the way up um, I suppose you could start at the bottom if you wanted to, but on this one I've got quite a long um, a wide base So I knew that there's a good chance I'll be able to finish up with a full board at the bottom Because uh, you, you know, I mean the idea there is you just want to avoid doing cuts Because they're time-consuming, but you know if you're doing this as a hobby and you're not in a rush to do it Then a few extra cuts don't really matter do they? Um, there's a friend of mine who recently did one of these uh, after a few pointers, pretty much just left him up to doing it on his first time. He did a very good job. Um, but, uh, I mean, his has got a lot more cuts where he put his in. He might have done individual panels with boards and things like that. But, you know, it works fine. And uh, you know, just get stuck in and, and you'll, soon, you'll soon learn the best way to do things. And uh, sorry, I can't explain them a bit better. So I've got the other, other three sides to do. And I'll give you a bit of an update. Uh, when I've done that, okay, and uh, see how that goes. So thanks for watching um, and uh, Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye